Hi guys, Allison here, the bored housewife, um, or the broken housewife this week. So uh, I have a really fun story to share with you, and I will get to that in a minute. And it's even more fun because it's a little ironic. Um, from what we were talking about last week, it totally kind of fits, or I made it fit anyway. <laughs> decided to see the silver lining. Um, but yeah, so this week uh, we're definitely going to be piggybacking off of what I talked about last week with the values and respecting our values and um, creating expectations that meet those things. Um, and I'm going to expand on that uh, by talking about this little voice inside of our head. I've talked about the voices inside of my head before. Um, lately it's just been the one. Uh, <laughs> I'm totally kidding, but... Kind of. It's, you know, that annoying, like, it sounds like a voice of reason, but it's, like, it's just there to, like, make you doubt and hate everything. Um, so I'm going to be talking about that and relating it to what we talked about last week. Um, I am sipping on a little bit of wine this week. So uh, grab your beverage of choice, maybe wine or cocktail. Um, and cheers, guys. recap before I get into my super fun story. Um, last week I talked about, um, you know, when you're trying to do something that you hate doing and we realize that there's some things that even though we don't like doing them, we do them anyways. And then there's other things. And I took examples like cleaning the bathroom or working out, um, that, we know are, are important, we know that are good for us, but we just don't like doing them, right? How do you get yourself to do the things that you don't want to do, even though you know that deep down they're good for you? So I talked about, you know, creating a set of values and a really sturdy foundation of values that have a deep meaning um, to give you sort of that inspiration when it's like you're not wanting to go do it. Um, or maybe not inspiration, but more so motivation to do something when you don't want to do it. And then, you know, respecting that is getting up and doing the thing that you don't want to do, right? And realizing that your values are bigger than maybe you being uncomfortable for a few minutes or a half hour, however long you have to do this thing. And then having expectations that coincide with those things. I've realized that it's really hard to uphold your values when you want to do something to better yourself when your expectations are extremely high. Um, maybe your expectations are really low. Like wherever you kind of lie in that um, frame, maybe you don't have any expectations at all and that's kind of what you're missing. Um, so I, um, with that, I will get into in a minute, but I wanted to share with you so I'm not sure how much I've shared this, but pretty much the whole month of January, we were on restriction to um, the bases only, okay? And even with that, we had a curfew. We had to be at home by like 10 p.m. or something. Really frustrating. These are because of COVID and the like new variant. And, um, you know, it's just like you feel really helpless. And so anyways, I'm not going to get too much into that, but <laughs> it's just like, you know, it was super frustrating and not fun. And, you know, you you get this opportunity to live and move to a new country and, you know, one that you would never imagine yourself in and maybe never even imagined yourself visiting. You want to be able to go and do an experience. So I was very frustrated this last month with having this, you know, lockdown situation. And... Um, Finally, they've lifted it. We still have to be, we can't be in like bars and restaurants off base past 9 p.m. Um, but we're at least able to go and do those things again, like go and kind of explore a little bit. So um, super exciting. So a friend of mine um, 
they are leaving soon. And she's a new friend and she's leaving and I'm super bummed about that. But um, she really wanted to take me to this place, which is like a pottery village. It's called Yomatan Pottery Village. And it's basically like kind of this community with a bunch of different like old houses that they've converted into little shops. Um, they have a community kiln that's like really old and cool. Um, and they just like make pottery. There's a glass blower there. Like they just have a lot of cool, neat uh, Japanese ceramic pottery stuff. So we wanted to go there and take a look and see if anything, you know, struck us. Well, because of the time crunch of her leaving within this month, it was kind of like this was the day that we could go. And it happened to be pouring down rain. And it's like a lot of it is walking <laughs> outside. Yeah, you can go into the little like shops and you're you can shop without being in the rain but it's raining pretty hard okay anyways drive up there get out of the car um go into the first place look around oh lovely lovely we wanted to like look at several of the shops and then kind of like make our way back and like you know remember things that like oh that really struck my eye so we didn't have to like carry it all over with us I go to walk out and there's some steps there and it's kind of like that slate stone I think is the best way to describe it. It's that stone that's really smooth and rain is just like pouring down on it. If I remember right, I think there was even like a little puddle at the top of these stairs and my rain boots I guess don't have very good traction. <laughs> I slipped. My, I saw my foot up in front of my face. That's how high I was up in the air. Fell down once and twice at least. I'm not sure how many steps I fell down. Um, flat on my tailbone. So much fun. <laughs> so not only am I freaking out my new friend, but the poor woman who owned the store, she comes out and she's like so worried for me. And there's a little bit of a language barrier there. So I'm just like, I just need to sit here for a minute, okay? <laughs> like, I was in so much pain. I have never fallen on my tailbone like that before. And I'm like, I used to dance. I used to fall on my butt all the time. I would just randomly fall. I don't know how many times I've fallen on stage for, like, stupid little missteps. I sprained my ankle. I've um, got the wind knocked out of me before. All of these things, right? Most of the time, I just popped right back up and kept going. Um, with the occasion of, like, the sprained ankles, that might have been, like, the only time, like, I didn't. But I just couldn't stand up. I was, like, stunned. And I was like, oh, my God, I think I broke my tailbone. <laughs> and let me tell you, it still hurts really bad. I'm actually surprised I can sit like this. I have not been able to, like, really sit on my tailbone at all. And even still, I'm, like, kind of sitting off to the side, like, on my cheek. Um, I have like my foot underneath me to kind of like prop me up a little bit, but it hurts guys. Like if you bruise your tailbone, like there's nothing they can do for you. They just have you take ibuprofen and Tylenol to like try to help with the pain and the swelling. You can ice it and you can heat it and that's about it. You just have to wait for the damn thing to heal. <laughs> so I'm just like, great, awesome. <laughs> like this is so, not the time, right? <laughs> so I'm just like. Fuck me. Um, tried to walk around there for a little while. Uh, luckily, a lot of the stores were closed anyways. So we kind of were just like, after a while, I was like, I think I need to leave. Somehow I drove myself home. I don't know how I did it. Um, I drove us home. And last night was rough. Uh, Cliff made me go to the ER just to make sure <laughs> I, like was that they couldn't do x-rays or anything. Because they don't. They don't do that stuff. But anyways... So, today I'm sitting here, and, like, last night I didn't get very good sleep, and it was just, like, you can't find a great position, because, like, it, it hurts when you put pressure on that area. So, like, when I go to bend forward, it, like, pulls really bad. But I realized, like, if I squat down, like, kind of, <laughs> like, Beyonce booty squat down, and then stand back up, it actually doesn't hurt. As long as I keep my spine straight and I'm not, like, you know, pulling, it feels totally fine. Um, and I can also, like, lift my legs up. So I'm, like, I have balance still and all of that. So this is a silver lining, okay? 
I, this whole last week and so, have been working on this value aspect, okay? When not wanting, when I didn't want to work out, when I didn't want to do things, and specifically working out because it applies to this scenario, I did it anyways. And, you know, I'm not in the best shape of my life, but I'm not in the worst shape either. So I just realized, like, here I'm thinking, like, my value is I want to exercise so that long-term, if something happens, I'm in good health to recover quickly or maybe even get less hurt because I'm in a certain kind of shape. And I'm thinking that this is, like, way off, but apparently I'm 31 now and my body does not bounce back like it used to. So I'm like, wow, I'm feeling this like now, like this is bad. Like I never, this is the second time this fall when we were on our vacation, I sprained my ankle and I was shocked at how long it took to heal. Like your body literally stops healing quickly when you get older. Like it's super shitty. And so I'm just like, why is this still hurting today? You know, um, but I'm just thankful that for one, I have a big butt. So I'm sure that falling on it, my big butt helped protect my tailbone a little bit. So thank you, big butt. Um, also, like just from working out and doing a lot of like lower body exercises, I'm sure my butt muscles kind of contracted as well and probably helped, you know, protect my tailbone to a certain extent. Also, now that I'm home and I'm recovering, you know, I can squat down like that and still pick stuff up or do stuff on the ground and stand up. And there's slight discomfort, but it's not super painful. Whereas, like, if I try to bend over from my waist, it's extremely painful. Um, and then also just being able to have the balance and stuff to stand on one leg and, like, bring my foot up to me. So when I was in the shower this morning, like, I usually kind of, like, bend over to, like, wash my leg and I, like, go to my feet. Well, I couldn't do that, so I'm like, shit. And then I was like, oh, let me see. And I, like, lift my leg up, and I was able to balance in the shower and, like, get my foot and get everything clean, <laughs> okay? So I'm just like, all right, so see, like, there's already positives to the fact that, like, even though there's a lot of reasons that are good for working out, like, here I am at the age of 31, and luckily for me, I'm able to do these things because now I can still function. If not, I wouldn't be able to do anything that was like below my arm's reach. Um, I've also been rocking the like Playboy Bunny waitress. Um, <laughs> you guys know like the Playboy Bunnies, they like would stand in a bevel and then they'd kind of like plie their knees and like bend backwards to like serve drinks and stuff. Um, that also works as well, but that takes a certain level of core and leg strength. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I'm figuring it out, but it's just like kind of funny and ironic that here I am, you know, last week talking about what my values are and putting it into perspective of like, hey, long term, you want to be able to be able to recover. You want to be able to like be able to take care of yourself. And here it is not a week later <laughs> and it's being put to practice. <laughs> Thank you, universe, for showing me the way. Um, yeah. Yeah. Fun stuff, guys. It's so much fun to be a klutz in Japan. It's really awesome. <laughs> so uh, that brings me now to my next point, which is the topic of this week's episode. Usually about this time, um, you know, you get injured or you get, like, out of commission for something. Um, and, or, and just in general, too. But, like, this is what reminded me of this. Um, I would start hearing that annoying bitch inside my head. Uh, she acts like she's reason, um, but I don't know. She's like, she's like an outdated version of reason. Like, she has some really good points sometimes, but they're not, they don't actually benefit me. And it's that voice that's like, oh, you know, don't work out today. You're tired. You know, you didn't sleep well, um, you're hungry right now, so you should probably eat. Oh, you need to do this other stuff first. And then she comes back around, and it's like 9 o'clock at night, and I'm like, oh, shit, you know, I never ended up working out today. And she's like, yeah, you fucking lazy piece of shit. You should have done it this morning. <laughs> Anybody else have that bitch in her head? 
Because <laughs> I do, and she sucks. I hate her so much. Um, but, you know, it's for everything. She she says stuff to me all the time like that. It's like, oh, take it easy. You don't need to do that right now. Like, you work so hard. And it's like, yeah, I do. And then next thing you know, it's like, I cannot believe that you didn't do it. And she guilt trips me all the time. She's also the bitch that, like, you know, we've seen the memes of, like, people that are, like, me laying awake staring at my ceiling at 3 a.m. thinking about that time I, like, tripped and fell in third grade. And <laughs> it's, like, that's the same voice, you know? It's, like, remember all these stupid things that you did and how embarrassing that was? And it's just, like, oh, my God, would you shut up? So, you know, why I say, like, this remind me is because you know, a few weeks ago when I wasn't as actively working out, I might have put off working out for several days in a row. So Monday, definitely not getting it in. Tuesday, maybe, <laughs> depending on how I felt. Wednesday, maybe. And then Thursday, Friday would depend on how guilty I felt through not doing it the first three days of the week. So usually at this point, I probably wouldn't have worked out Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. Um, I slipped and fell Thursday, so now I'm out of commission probably for at least maybe a week or so. We'll see how quickly I recover. Um, but I would be saying in my head, you fucking piece of shit, look at you now. Like, you, um, could have been working out all week and you put it off and now there's nothing that you can do. And that would make me feel bad, right? That makes you feel bad when you start having those thoughts and you're feeling guilty about, like, yeah, I wasted that time and now now I really can't work out, you know? Now I'm injured, I can't do this. Or, um, you know, other things going on, like, oh, you could have, um, like, if you want to cook at home more, okay? You could have been cooking at home all week and then, like, someone invites you to a big dinner on, like, a Friday or Saturday night and you're just like, oh, like, we spent money going out all week and I had this refrigerator full of groceries like shoot I should have been you know cooking all week so that we could have really enjoyed now I feel guilty spending the money or I felt like feel guilty indulging more and eating out like whatever it is you know um cleaning your house even like you had maybe several nights out of the week that you could have cleaned your house or done you know done stuff and then all of a sudden during the weekend last minute you have people that want to come over and you're like scrambling to get it done and you're like God, if I would have just gotten this done, you know, like there's so many different scenarios um, just in like how we could procrastinate or make excuses for not doing them. And then, you know, when we say, oh, tomorrow, 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 well, tomorrow you might slip and fall on your fucking ass and break your tailbone. (laughs) Okay, bruise your tailbone. I don't think it's actually broken, okay? But you get my point? So it's like, however, because this week I you know, listened when that voice would come in and she'd be acting like my friend, like, hey, girl, you're tired. Like, you should just, like, do laundry today and watch Golden Girls. And, you know, like, you had such an exhausting weekend. Like, you just need to take your time and get it back into it. No. That, I didn't get on it as quickly as I should have, but I was like, nope, I am making it a priority to work out today. And I just remembered to tell myself the same voice that I like updated reasoning person in my head was like, no, remember we thought about this and you want long-term commitment to working out. I also said to myself, hey, you know what? you've decided that your expectations are too high to work out, so let's try today lowering them a little bit. Maybe the exercise isn't going to be so hard. And that's what I did. Um, There were a few exercises in the routine that I did that I don't love, um, so I cut them out, and or I did less reps of them. Um, Some of the weight suggestions were a little high, and so I lowered them. And I felt really good about it. I was like, yeah, I still broke a sweat. I still got in a nice workout. But 
I wasn't feeling this pressure on myself to like go so hard and you got to live the most way that you can lift. And like, if it doesn't hurt, then it's not worth it. Like, you know, I wasn't going, all of those thoughts weren't going through my head and it was a much more enjoyable experience. Um, another aspect of that too is one of the workouts in my routine is suggested to do a cardio workout. I didn't feel like doing cardio. I wanted to do yoga. So I did yoga instead. Um, even in my yoga workouts, sometimes like holding some of those poses and stuff, it's really hard. But I just kind of told myself, I'm like, hey, it's just 30 minutes. You're only going to be here for a few more seconds. And you have permission to let the pose go if it's too much, if it's hurting or it's uncomfortable. You can totally do that. So I think just kind of like lowering my expectation and giving myself permission to kind of evaluate where I'm at for that day helped so much. So I got my workouts in. So yesterday when I slipped and fell, and now I'm not going to be able to work out for several days, I don't feel bad about it. That girl tried to come in and she tried to talk to me. I was like, bitch, please. I put in my work earlier this week, okay? (laughs) Don't you even start with me, all right? And she couldn't. She didn't have a leg to stand on. So that's what I kind of wanted to get into. It's like when we're having, when we figure out what our true value is and what that meaning is for us, um, and we start respecting those values and then we put in the expectations for them, when those negative voices kind of come into our head, it's so much easier to reason with them and, you know, give them less power um, win the argument because they don't have value at all to what they're saying. The voice that tells me to just watch Gilmore Girls in bed all day doesn't have anything that is benefiting my life doing that. So it might win on a scenario where all I can muster up is robot mode, right? But it's not going to win when my values are so so much more deeply rooted in the fact that this isn't just about today. This is about, you know, 40 years from now, God willing. Um, this isn't about just, you know, getting my bathrooms clean today. This is about realizing I have a lifetime worth of cleaning bathrooms. Um, you know, you would have to make a lot of money, Allison, to feel justified in hiring someone to do this for you. Um, you know, I'm just that kind of person because I would feel really awkward um, spending my money that way. Other people are like, hell no, I, I don't care. I'd pay anything at this moment in my life, like, to each his own, right? I'm just saying, like, what it is for me. Um, so... You know, whatever that thing is, when your values are there and then your expectations meet the values, you're respecting all of that, that voice, you take so much of the argument away and talking yourself out of it is actually um, really hard to do. Uh, So another part of that too, um, before I get into this other aspect of it, I kind of realize or I'm kind of thinking and again this is all very experimental so if you guys try this sort of stuff and it's not working for you um I would love to hear about it if you're trying it and it is working for you I'd love to hear about that too um so far it's working for me I'm only you know a few weeks in so we'll see how long it lasts but I feel a lot more positive and a lot more better about it I was also just realizing how much of that negative self-talk has not been present Um, especially, you know, after falling and me immediately like starting to go there in my head and then realizing like, wait, I don't actually feel bad about this because I did put in work this week. Um, I realized I haven't really hurt her much at all. And so for me, that was really great because I get swayed a lot by that, (laughs) by that voice. Um, And I also feel guilty a lot for really dumb stuff that I shouldn't be feeling guilty about. Um, So my theory is that if you start hearing that voice again a lot, that negative voice, that voice that's trying to talk you out of doing positive things and making you feel guilty about it later, um, my guess is that maybe your values have kind of gotten out of line again. 
maybe your expectations are off, um, or maybe you're just, you've kind of forgot your value. You're not respecting it the same way that you once were. So, um, you know, if this voice keeps coming back in, you know, maybe think to yourself like, oh, here I am kind of having this like self-doubt and guilt and all of this stuff again. Maybe I need to rework my values. Maybe I need to reevaluate where I'm at. Oh, you know, I've kind of fallen off the horse. I'm not like respecting that anymore. Um, or, you know, my expectations have changed a lot. Maybe I need to like reevaluate those. So, and this is just a theory. So, you know, if you're kind of in that place, maybe think about it that way. Maybe it's something completely different too, but um, maybe think about it that way. And, you know, I don't like to get into too much psychological stuff here because I don't have a lot of business talking about it, but I just wanted to kind of share also another thing that I've been doing that's just been positive for me. And that is um, when I do hear that voice, because that voice isn't ever going to go away, right? Like that voice is about our insecurities. Um, sometimes it is helpful, you know, it makes us stop and think about like, oh, is this like an actual good choice, you know? Um, but that's when it's like, what kind of reasoning is it giving you? Is it making it? Because, you know, we're creatures of comfort, right? Is it saying this because it's actually a concern for you? Or is it saying this because it would be really hard, the thing that you're doing? Um, but I get a lot of those where I'm just like, you know, going throughout my day. And then all of a sudden I have this like stupid memory of something that I did that was dumb and I just like immediately feel guilty about it and I think about like what those people might think of me if they still remember all these different things and it's not to say that people don't remember some dumb stuff that you've done um people probably remember some dumb stuff that you've done that you don't remember right or that you're not even aware of um but the thing is is to like you know try to not care about that but also, like, when those things are coming into your head, I just start having, I just try to have, like, some positive self-talk. So, you know, if I'm starting to go down that memory memory lane road of Allison's embarrassments, <laughs> I kind of just stop and I'm like, we're not going there. We're not doing this today. And I try to put my focus into something else. So maybe it's reading, maybe it's watching TV, maybe it's talking, whatever it is, um... It doesn't work all the time, of course. Sometimes you go there and you're just kind of in the dark place for a minute. Um, but that's what kind of helps me. Or, you know, I just kind of try to talk myself away from it. Like, yeah, that was really embarrassing. And, yeah, maybe those people do remember it. But does it really matter? Like, do you care about those people still? Like, will you ever see them again? Um they still talked to you after that experience. So obviously it didn't rub them in the wrong way. Like you're taking it a lot worse than they are or, you know, whatever the scenario is. So I try to have those kind of conversations because um, I don't know that, like I've seen a lot of those memes lately where people have similar experiences of like, oh my God, you know, and even I was just talking to my mom recently and she shared one with me that she thinks about and it's just like, it's so silly, and she was, like, saying it to me. I'm just, like, laughing. I'm like, Mom, that's such a dumb story. Like, I can't believe you're, like, still think about that. And she was like, I do, though. Like, it just pops up in my head. And so, you know, if your friends can even laugh at those things, then it's like, oh, you know, this really isn't something to be ashamed about. This isn't really something that I should, you know, be worrying about. Um, but I think it's just a way of us to kind of – Again, it's like that outdated version of reasoning. It feels like it's there to protect us, but really it's just kind of feeding our insecurities. And, you know, because we are, we want to be comfortable and, um, you know, we like things that are familiar and all of that sort of stuff. I think that that voice kind of is there to like stop us from being being better in a certain way, like stop us from having growth um, because growth typically means change and embracing all of that. And the unknown is scary and that's, you know, hard to deal with sometimes. Um, so I think that voice specifically when we're going down these like embarrassing moment like scenarios, 
it's there to kind of hurt our self-esteem, um, our confidence to, you know, make us take a step back and then maybe feel like, oh, you know what, I'm, I'm actually not qualified for this. Um, you know, I'm actually, you know, shouldn't do this because the last time I tried to do this, this really bad thing happened. Um, you know, I fell and slipped on my ass <laughs> in this Japanese, like, creative village and totally freaked out the woman who owned the store. But I will 100% be back <laughs> because, you know, I can't let that stop me. Um, and, you know, the reality of it is she probably won't remember me. Um, and if she does, then, you know, I'll just have to deal with that. And also maybe just show, like, no hard feelings. I slipped on your steps and we're cool. So, <laughs> you know, it's all good. All right, guys, I am going to wrap it up. Um, I, yeah, just want to kind of reiterate, um, you know, the, the voices that are in our heads, the voices that whisper the mean stuff in our ears, um, they're very persuasive and they're hard to shake sometimes. And, um, you know, I think that if you really start to work on your values and understanding them, you know, getting your expectations in the right place, I think it becomes easier over time. And remember that this is not 100%. This is, okay, I've figured it out. This is where I am now. Like, this is ever-changing. As circumstances in your life change, your priorities are going to change. Your values are going to change. Um, so keep all of that in mind when you're thinking of this stuff. And, you know, like I said, if that annoying voice, if she pops up in your head, be like, okay, like she was kind of quiet for a while. Why, why all of a sudden is she trying to make me feel like this again? And maybe it's time to really like reevaluate where you are and kind of figure out like some new set of values or figure out like oh you know what no I still do think those things and I still care about them I just kind of lost my way a little bit so um yeah I hope this was helpful again I'm not into psychology at all uh like I mean I find it really interesting but like my little tip today um that's what I do for myself and I just felt like sharing it in case maybe it would help some of you guys um, my thoughts and all of that on the psychological side of like what those voices are, are probably not, you know, super accurate. It's just what I tell myself to kind of work through some of this stuff. Um, and it seems to help for me. So if it helps for you, awesome. If it doesn't, um, that's okay too. I hope you guys can find something that will work for you. But anyways, um, please like, uh, comment, subscribe, go to my social media posts. Um, when you're on my social media posts or on my Linktree account, um, I now, if you go to my website link, I now have a mailing list that you can subscribe to. So hopefully I will be sending those out in March. And I'm also going to be starting a blog soon. So if you would like to get updates about the blog, please subscribe to that as well. It's on um, there is the board housewife tab and then there's the TBH blog tab. So, um, both of those are there, but anyways, thank you so much guys for, uh, joining me for another week's episode. I hope you have a great rest of your week. Please nobody break their butt like I did. <laughs> Be very careful guys. Okay. Um, and cheers. I'll see you soon. Bye.